it's the story of the week. You know, Aaron Rodgers had probably the worst game of his career in his debut this year, uh, coming off that offseason in which he demanded a trade. He skipped the offseason programs. He contemplated retirement. He tried out for Jeopardy as a host. He told Aaron Andrews that he had nothing left to prove. And then he goes out and he has the worst game of his career in what was also, Rob, the worst loss of his career. And so naturally, people are speculating and talking about it and coming to all sorts of conclusions about it. And one of those people, Rob, is his former teammate. His former tight end, they, you know, they, they hooked up on many a pass, many a touchdown together, and that, of course, is Jermichael Finley. Do we have sound of Finley or do, do I have to read it? Okay, here's Jermichael Finley, Rob, on why he believes that Rodgers struggled mightily on Sunday. He told this to Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max on ESPN Radio. This is the National Football League. Each offseason, you got to work like it's the last season. And I just don't see a work ethic in Aaron Rodgers that I have in previous years. And uh, I actually, you can see it right through his his helmet. The eyes and the face tell, tells everything of the personality. And uh, I just don't see it, that NFL hunger and, and just feel hungry to go win another championship. I just think it's cliche and talk. Um, that, that guys get up there and say, oh, I want to win a championship. Oh, it sounds good, but I want to see what you do on the field. All right. First of go all, ahead, go ahead, first of all, shame on those guys for not, like, making him, like, g- give more of an explanation, Chris. You could see it from your couch looking through the helmet. Come on. Like, Chris, if that was a guy on our show, we would have to stop. Okay, right? Stop. Have you what talked you to other p- right. Have you talked to other players? What do you mean you could see it? You could see it from your living room in in uh San Diego, like really you were watching the game on TV and you could see it? Come on. I mean, just say you don't like him. You don't like what went on in Green Bay. You felt like he got you out of grip. Whatever it is, you've been saying this since 2012. Right. Did you watch last year? Finley has been critical of Rodgers, as you said, for the last nine years. Chris, did he watch last year when he was the MVP? Did he say it after Aaron Rodgers had the stinker against Tampa Bay with the two picks? He went on to win the MVP. I'm not saying he's going to win the MVP this year, but come on. To, to put a guy on and not challenge him and not make him, at least, Chris, give me the belief that you have some insight. You don't have any insight. You played with him years ago. If you want to get on and say, I'm close to people there still in Green Bay. They tell me he's not the same guy. They right. tell me he don't work out as hard. He's lackluster in practice. He's busy practicing his Jeopardy answers. <laughs> you know, Chris, <laughs> give me something. You can Rob, see it through the helmet? No, you're, you're right on the money. And that was my first thought. When I read this quote, and he, he, here it is. Uh, I just don't see a work ethic in Aaron Rodgers that I have in previous years. Rob, my first thought is, okay, are you at practice? Right. I mean, seriously. And as you said, if you say that to people interviewing you, the natural thought is, uh, so are you, like you said, are you still talking to people in Green Bay? Have you talked to players? How do you know the work ethic suffering? Because, look, we can joke about it and, and make light and all that, but the fact that Aaron Rodgers went to Hawaii and was on vacation, that doesn't mean he wasn't working hard. That doesn't it mean, doesn't that, mean what, right. He didn't everybody go on vacation can take a last vacation. Year? Last right. offseason, right? Last year he went on vacation, I'm sure. Exactly. Everybody, that, that doesn't mean the weeks prior that he wasn't killing himself working for the upcoming season. I don't know. I mean, that's right. my point. I don't know, and I doubt Jermichael Finley knows. And if he does know, to your point, Rob, he has a duty to say, I'm not just making this up. 
This is not just a figment of my imagination. I've talked to players. Right. I've talked to coaches. And especially, Rob, with their history. Especially when you're a guy that's been critical of Aaron Rodgers for nearly a decade. Ever you since have he to left go out Green your Bay. Way to prove this is not sour grapes. This is not just because we don't get along. This is because guys are telling me it. Or I saw it myself. You got to give me more than that. But, but this is what we're, we talk about all the time. You can't let people just come on and say anything without pushing back a little bit. If he said that, Chris, then I'm interested. Wouldn't you be interested oh, yeah. in that? Oh, yeah, that's a great quote. But oh, you got to yeah. back it up. You got to back it up. And I, look, what's interesting to me, Robin, we've talked. We had a Ephraim Salam, former offensive lineman, on the show yesterday. He, he said, if I was in that locker room, if I was playing for the Green Bay Packers, I'd be ticked off at Aaron. He said, I'd be upset that he doesn't look like he's all in. I watched our colleague at FS1, Marcellus Wiley, say today on his show that he doesn't think that Aaron Rodgers is all in, that he looks detached. and I mean, it's just his opinion, but, you know, he looks detached and he doesn't think he's, he's you know, cares about winning anymore because he doesn't need this job anymore. He's, he's already thinking about moving on. You know, they, these are thoughts that are out there, Rob. And so what I, what's interesting to me, and, I've, you, know, I, you know, I've been a little critical of Aaron. Like, you can't come in off what you did this offseason and have a clunker like that in game one. All right? But it's interesting to me that with all that he has done, Rob, all that Aaron Rodgers has accomplished, and he's, you know, he's one of the greatest to ever do it. We all know that. That he is after one horrendous game, the first game of the season, he is facing such doubts, Rob. Is that odd to you? I mean, because this dude's a I don't. I don't think it's odd. I think it's totally ridiculous because if he lights up the Lions this Monday night, Chris, and puts on a, a 40-piece on the Lions, right? The, the 49ers scored 41 points in the first three quarters against Detroit. Right. Right. All right. If he puts up a forty piece, then what? What's the dialogue? Oh well, it's, I guess he's. I guess he's back. He's back. I guess he's uh, into it again. Or right. you watch. I'm telling you, if you if you're going to oh, Vegas, oh no, it's going to be big. Right. I, I just I just think you got to be real careful with this game. We've seen the clunkers, didn't we? See Cliff Kingsbury, Chris Crown. Uh, Kyler Murray last year after the Hale Murray. Do you remember that? What did we say when he said that he could Slow split down. the MVP with, uh, with Patrick Mahomes every other year? Oh, whoa. Right. All right. He threw a Hail Mary. They won the game. Let's not get crazy. And then what happened? They didn't make the playoffs. Right, right. Yeah, um, it, it is interesting to me that, that – you know, he's got such doubters. But that's, Rob, that's what happens. He put himself in harm's way by all he did this offseason. And like I said, he won the offseason. No, when you talk like that, Chris, yeah, people are going to be what right. you call it. There's no doubt about it. And and then if he didn't he say anything, the spotlight on himself. then he'd be aloof and right. you don't know what he's thinking. And that's why he's not a good teammate, doesn't express himself. You can't win. But but you're right. His offseason – was so out loud and so out of character from what we are used to. I don't. I, you remember when Aaron Rodgers they fired their quarterback coach? They didn't even ask. He didn't him. say a word. He didn't make a stink, Chris. Do right. you remember a stink? No, I don't remember not, when what. Matt Lafleur was hired and he wasn't really you know involved consulted. in it. Right, right. Nothing. I don't remember a stink. Right. So yeah, when that's that's my point, right? When you do that, you do have to go out and you got a ball. And um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I don't know. None of us knows if Aaron's really detached. But you do open yourself up to that when you do what you did in the offseason. And, Rob, he's so calm and cool and unbothered. And I agree. I, I, get, I, I think he's saying the right things. Look, it's one game. We'll be fine. And, and he said it's on him, though. He said right. he played he poorly. T- he owned it. He, he, he owned, owned it. it. Uh, he owned it enough for me. I don't know. I mean, I've heard people say, oh, he didn't know. I, I don't know what uh, you want him to say. I, what, what else I, you want him to say? He said I played bad. He said I'm frustrated with my performance. 
He said the first. He said both interceptions were on him. Now the day he came or yesterday he came out with he got hit in the in the private parts. But that's just an explanation. That's right. not an but excuse. That say he, he but he still it. said right. I probably I, after the game he said I probably should have. He he said he. I can't remember exactly what he said he should have done instead. But in both instances, Rob, he took the blame. All right, so that's, that's all you want a guy to do. Him, it. Right. I don't need right. him to cry about it and, you know, uh, woe is me about it. Just he, he, has to, it. he has to grovel. He has to grovel, right. Chris, and be like, oh, I, just, I, I had a terrible game. I'm the worst quarterback. I don't know what I was right, thinking. Right, exactly. Dude, Come on. The guy just had don't need to coming do all off that. an unbelievable MVP at age 37 when people would, were saying he was finished, Chris. Come on. Rob, we, it'll this, be if, – if he doesn't – play great against or, or, you know, very good against Detroit. What will you like? What will it take for you to really start to wonder, OK, is he into this or has he basically retired it, in his mind? It, it, or would what? Ta- it would take more. To, it would take a couple of games. I'd have to look at him. And they always talk about in the NFL. You do it. You do it by uh, quarters. Right. Like four games. Right. Right. And I think that's what you have to look at. At four and games, there, you could get you could get a feel for where somebody is to me. Their next two games, Rob, at, that's why I do think he's got to be great against Detroit, and I think he will be. But they got San Francisco after that, which obviously is a good defense, and Pittsburgh after that, Rob. Yeah. No, so, that, that, these, are, these yeah. are big games. Yeah. So And, and, and you know, you start 0-2, Rob, in the last two years, this is including last year when they expanded the playoffs to 14 teams. The last 20 teams, there have been 20 teams in the last two years to start 0-2. None of them have made the playoffs. Is that right? That's yeah. So, and that, so there's a lot of teams with Baltimore. And I'm not so, saying they so can't make the playoffs. So if Dallas loses this week, they, you well, think they're – I'm mean, not going to write no. teams off, but I'm saying Dallas, Green no. Bay, Baltimore, who, we can, any of the other top teams that lost. It's interesting because, like I said, it, it, since 2007, Rob, it's like 12% of the teams – that started 0-2 made the playoffs. So it is definitely a tough road to hold when you lose your first two games. So this is a big one for Green Bay, for Aaron, and for the team in general.